Hey, welcome back to Mining Your Business, Lancaster Chamber of Commerce. I'm Chris Spiker, and I'm also the uh, announcer. So, from Greenby Landscaping, our go-to guys in the world of things growing and making things pretty in landscaping, uh, Dave Phillips and Brad Hayes, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We had some snow last week. We did. Yeah, that's it's been, what, eight years since we had a pretty good... Uh, and that was kind of fun. It was on Thanksgiving, so we kind of had the day off, and everybody was kind of home. Yeah, that worked out good. Worked out so, good. So uh, we just talked about winterizing our pets. How do we winterize our yard? What what happens? You know, my my oleanders kind of took a hit. Are they going to bounce back and be green again, or are they just going to be bent over and? Yeah, who um, wants to handle that one? <laughs> we can either one of us can. Um, as far as the oleanders, yeah, they'll spring back. Uh, they are kind of brittle. You'll notice around town a lot of the brittle plants and uh, younger woody uh, perennials and trees uh, had some branches that broke. Yeah, probably <clears throat> so, because I didn't trim them this year. Well, they're just they're not they they're not adapted to snow, and so. Um, out here, and just once in a while, when we get these heavy snowfalls, we're going to experience extra breakage and repair work for it the happens. trees. It does once it in a while. It's a growing, a growing uh, part of your family out there in the yard. It is, and we're fortunate that we don't have to deal with snowfall uh, on a regular basis because other communities in in cold areas have to deal with it all winter long. Yeah, so you get your yard looking just the way you want it. Or you're getting We're used spoiled, to it. let's face it. <laughs> it's not that bad out here. So um, we do have the wind, and uh, once in a while that, that causes some problems with branches and things like that. But And that's the sort of thing, I mean, if you're in a yard uh, or in a, at an office and you see things that uh, need a little attention, then you point it out or let the property owner know. And... Yeah, that's really Dave's department. He, he handles all of our maintenance and... And repair work. So. And, and so that's what I did uh, earlier in the week is I went around to our maintenance projects and took a look at them. And we had several projects that, uh, you know, trees were damaged from the snow. And so I did some selective pruning on them and, uh, and we're going to hope for the best. Like, they're just not used to having that weight on the branches in it. So it, it broke several of them. And uh, like I said, it was unexpected. You know, I don't think, I can't remember the last time we had snow on Thanksgiving. No, that, I'm, that's probably a first. I think so. So it took us all by surprise. So you're able to, uh, you know, and that's part of, we were going to talk today a little bit about a uh, plan, uh, putting a plan together for a yard, and part of that is uh, what kind of trees. Yeah, we always want to look at what the exposure of the tree is going to be and where it's, what, what its purpose is going to be. Is it for shade? Is it for decorative? So, but unfortunately, you know, a lot of our trees have large canopies, and so that the heavy snow falls on the canopies and if it's not shooken off, I mean that could be one of the best things to do is go out in the yard and shake some of the snow off that tree. Now wait a minute, you're standing under the tree and you're shaking the snow. <laughs> some of it, yeah. You know. Or take a broom or a, br a broom to knock it off. But you can wear a helmet and get yeah. under the tree. <laughs> snow suit. You can put the kids put the kids under there and tell them it's snowing on Let's them. go climb in the trees. Yeah. Sure. I mean but short of that there's not a lot you can do in preparation because you just don't know. And you want the canopy because you need shade. Right, exactly. Sometime. Right, exactly. In the summertime. So, uh, really, on you know, comparing to other areas where they get heavy snowfalls, our, uh, the amount of damage that we incur, you know, is very minimal. That's like when so, somebody's on Facebook and they say, oh, it's winter, and they show a picture on Facebook and there's like a chair that's knocked over. They said, oh, it's winter. Right. You know, very little happens. Snow there. alert. Yeah. Major emergency, not. But uh, yeah, so planning, um, if we were in an area where we had snowfall every year, we would plan for it, but we really, we don't really plan for snow. It's it's really not worth it. We, we, um, we plan for heavy winds. So that kind of takes care of the, you know, exposure as far as the brittle branches in the wind, things, you know, uh, trees like eucalyptus, we don't uh, like to put those near a, a house mm -hmm. uh, because they, they do break. They have a lot heavy breakage in the wind, and they, even after they're big. So 
Um, those are the trees, those and some of the pine trees you see on the news where they landed on a car or somebody's house. So that's part of planning. Um, but planning uh, is critical uh, as, as far as avoiding, you know, damage to your home from weather and, and just just uh, the growth of the plants, you know, the Thank root zones can damage the sidewalks or right. driveways, and we see that a lot out here. Now you can you have a crystal ball, so you can kind of look at somebody's yard and see what it'll be like in five or ten years, and uh, to make it worry-free maintenance. That's the key. We we design for the future. Um, it's going to look good as soon as we're done, but we want to know what is going to look like five years from now and what. What is your uh, labor? What is the requirement for maintenance going to be in five years? Or, you know, are you going to have to be out there for a half hour every every week, or can we minimize that? Or pay somebody to be out there for a half hour? Every yeah, week. either like way, it's a cost. Landscape. Like you know, how much landscaping. And by the way, you had told me that the winter time is when you really like to plant things because the, the weather. Is sure, good. I mean, uh, our you know when we lay sod in the winter. Uh, it just comes out so great in the spring. It's already rooted in, um, and so it, it doesn't have to adapt. When you plant, everybody thinks you should plant out here in the spring. Right. That's when we're all out shopping, loading up our trucks with plants. You know, uh, the parking lots are full of plants for sale. Do those guys ever um, sell things that don't grow here? <laughs> those guys? Those big guys? Those big, <laughs> Some of the, those big stores? <laughs> sure they do, but... You know, they warranty everything, so um, the problem is, is is you don't want to do all that, that work and labor to plant something and then wait eight months to find out that it's not going to make it right. and then have to dig it up, find your receipt, and go back to the store. So right. planning is, again, critical because you only want to do it once and enjoy it. And, you know, and now's the time. Now is the time for planning. If, if you're... Strategy is to have hire a contractor in the spring. You need to have a plan so that you can get your estimates and that you, you have a strategy to build it. Um, springtime is not always the most ideal time to plant out here, though. Yeah. That's what most people think. Now it is. And because that's where all the marketing and where all the push is uh, in the industry is in springtime. But in the Antelope Valley, you know, by, let's say you plant in May or June, by August, it's 100 degrees out. Right. Now, these plants have only had a couple months to establish, and now we have, you know, 100 degree temperatures and 40 mile an hour winds, so the water is just being sucked right out of the leaves, and that's pretty tough on a young plant that doesn't have an established root system. So, the, you know, I like to plant uh, late summer, fall, winter, um, but we do a lot of work in spring just because that's when everybody calls. So um, we will we'll be slammed in the springtime, and we're we're never too busy to take new customers. That, but now that's is the, yeah. yeah now is the time to really get the plan done. So and we offer really good um, pricing on uh, design work. And we have a new landscape design center, I think we mentioned last time, and it's really cool. You can come in there and we can figure out everything you need to do. It's right over there at the corner of Lancaster Boulevard and 10th Street West. Right. I was going to ask Dave a question. Uh, what's your favorite thing, uh, redoing or brand new? I think redoing, um, and the reason being is we can go in there and a homeowner has his house and they're just, they don't know what to do with it. And so, as Brad says, we develop a plan for it, and we can, they can see it transform before their very eyes. When it's brand new, it's just dirt, and the, you just do something, create something. But we can take something that's been really troublesome or ugly to them and create it into this beautiful oasis for them. And we walk away, and it's just, a, a transformation is huge. So. Yeah, and it's always an advantage to have some established plant material, you know, that we can utilize so that it's not all... Uh, brand new plantings, you know, you have some maturity in there. Yeah, it, it has a nice mixture, a nice feel to it. It doesn't look like, well, I've, I've seen it where there's my old house and there's my new landscaping. It's like, how do you move them together? Right, and right. You guys can do that. Tell me a little bit about the design center. 
Well, we uh, used to be the credit bureau, um, and there was a flower shop out there. I don't know how many of your listeners remember that. I remember that. But that's flowers. exactly where it's at. And um, so we went in there. The outside looks pretty much the same. We just finished a plan for the landscape so that we're going to transform that. But on the inside is where we did a lot of work. And so uh, when you walk in there, it's almost like a really nice, it, on a smaller scale, but like a, a tile store where you go in and you can see the materials on the wall and, and uh, touch, feel, you know. And uh, also we can sit down. We have a really nice space there where we can sit with clients and their families and discuss their needs and problems, challenges, and um, just develop a lot of the solutions right there. And you've been doing this. How did the two of you guys get together? I just have a, a minute, but... Well, I, I came to work for Brad who, 13, 14 years ago, and then I moved away to um, San Diego, and then um, I was looking to come back this way, and Brad said, well, why don't you partner with me? And I go, that sounds good to me. Let's do it. And so we uh, here we are. And people in the... When Dave started working with me, everybody thought he was a partner. That's how hard he worked. And, uh, you know, he wasn't concerned about the time clock or anything, but he worked like a partner, so I felt like that's, that's what we needed to do. Well, it's a, it's a wonderful relationship. Greenby Landscaping. What's your phone number again? Our number is 661-274-2331. And uh, you'll probably get Cheryl. Or, or Nuvia. Nuvia. And, and or Cheryl, Eric. Oh, Nuvia. We like <laughs> Nuvia. Hey, Greenby Landscaping, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for being a chamber member. Thank you for having us. You bet. Thank you, Chris.